Jackson Carmen, a young man from Ohio. Uh, as you watch them on film, what, what jumps out about their O-line? I mean, I think they're a good collective unit. I mean, they work together really well, and they have opened up gaps for uh, each end to uh, hit and make plays off of. So I think they really work well together as a collective unit, opening up gaps so he can make plays off of. Thank you. We'll go to Bill Rabinowitz from Columbus Dispatch. Hi, Tommy. Uh, ever since you've got here, everyone's always talked about your, your strength. Um, I want to ask you, what what is different about you this year, uh, other than just your raw strength, that's enabled you to have that kind of breakthrough that you've had? Uh, I think during that, like over quarantine, I really try to work on my trying to get faster and gain some more speed. And then along with uh, getting better at my technique that Coach Jay has been teaching, just been working on my craft over that time. And I think that's really helped me this season. And I think it's shown on the field as well. Next, we'll go to Rod Walker from the New Orleans Advocate. Hey, Tommy, how much um, of an influence did um, Taysom Hill have on you since you went to the same high school with him? And the second part of that question is, how does a guy from Idaho end up at Ohio State? Uh, so, I mean, Taysom Hill, I only talked to him maybe a few times, but I mean, he's a great dude. And I mean, just one of the guys you me looked up to because he's the one that, I mean, kind of, made it out of Idaho and then to the NFL to where the position he's at now. It's like just an inspiration. So, I mean, just having that was cool. And then being from Idaho to end up at Ohio State was just, I mean, Coach Jay kind of recruited me. So he found me just watched going through film and he saw my film, say so jumped out and then just starting that relationship with him. And then that's how I ended up here. Next, we'll go to Brendan Gulick from Buckeyes Now. Hey, Tommy, can you uh, talk about the the challenge of going against a quarterback that certainly is not a run first quarterback, but if if you break contain on a pass rush, he's shown an ability to really hurt you. What are the challenges unique to trying to to defend against a guy like that? Yeah, I mean, he's a dynamic player. I mean, he's he's faster than he seems and he can really throw the ball really well. So, I mean, we just have to be cautious of our rush lanes and really try to contain him as much as we can. So just kind of control the, our rush lanes and be cautious of where he's going to step up to or where he's going to try to flush out to. We'll now go to Tim May from Letterman Row. I mean, uh, it seems like you and Haskell especially, I know you're going to name every other defensive tackle when I ask this question, but it seems like you two guys especially have enjoyed playing with each other this year. Uh, as this season has progressed um, uh, side by side, uh, just what have you seen, especially out of him, that's just blossomed this year from your vantage point? I mean, I think his leadership and his just like love for the game has really grown this year. I mean, I know we both had a little wait for our playing time to kind of get there for this year. And I think we just kind of both blossomed into this year, kind of enjoying like seeing each other make plays and stuff and as long as everybody else on the D-line as well, like seeing just all of us as a unit just trying to make plays and play for one another has been really big this year. Next, we'll go to Tony Gerdeman from Buckeye Scoop. Tommy Haskell wasn't too interested in talking about himself, so I'll ask you to do it. Given everything he's been through this year and getting that All-American nod, what have you thought about just the entire journey that he's made this year? I mean, it's just amazing to see what he's gone through, especially just this year, like, and past years, like not having maybe the playing time he wanted to in his first couple of years, but then, and then this year, like all the adversity that he's faced to what he's doing now has just been amazing to watch. And like, I'm so happy that I get to play with him and so happy for what he's accomplished. And I mean, it's just huge. I'm just really happy for him. We'll go to Dan Hope from 11 Warriors. Hey, Tommy, what do you think has been the key to your guys' running game success, and what do you think you have to do to continue that success against Clemson's running offense? I mean, I think we just got to – everyone just got to do their job. I mean, as long as everyone does their job, I think we've done a pretty good job so far this year uh, against the run. So, I mean, as long as we just got to keep doing what we're supposed to do, and that will show on the field. We have time for one more question for Tommy, if there is one. And we will go to Clay Hall from WSYX. Hey, Tommy, I apologize. I've been in and out. How important is it or can you get pressure on Trevor Lawrence 
how important is it to affect him in some way? I mean, I think it's going to be big if we can, as a D-line, get some pressure when it's going to be passes, especially like when we know it's going to be a pass. So I think our biggest thing is just going to be able to contain him in the pocket and then just like you say, apply the pressure. And I think that will be, that will help us a long way. Thank you very much for the time, Tommy. We really appreciate it. Uh, good luck with the rest of your preparations. Thank you.